Where else can you get a brand new luxury car for no money down and low monthly payments? Only at Davenport Auto Park, of course. We're talking new Buicks. Top of the line, king of the hill, pick of the litter, cream of the crop. You get my drift. We're talking Buicks, like the 2015 Encore or Verano, Regal Turbo, LaCrosse, Enclave. No money down, zero, zilch, nada. Yeah, only at Davenport Auto Park. It's the real deal. Hello, and welcome to this edition of the Rocky Mountain Chamber Buzz, brought to you by the Rocky Mountain Area Chamber of Commerce and our chairman, Roger B. Taylor. This show is also sponsored by the generous support of Roger B. Taylor and Associates. We have an exciting program for you today. We're joined with Mr. Larry Russell and Ms. Tony Powell. Larry is the CEO of the Rocky Mountain Housing Authority, and Tony is the Director of Capital Funding. We're going to first introduce you to the work of the Rocky Mountain Housing Authority and then talk about an exciting new project underway uh, that we'll get to later. Larry, can you first just give us a brief overview of what is the Rocky Mountain Housing Authority? Well, the Rocky Mountain Housing Authority is a public housing program. Uh, fortunately, we have two major programs, Section 8 and public housing. Okay. Uh, we have 756 units of public housing and we average somewhere around 260 of Section 8 vouchers. Okay. So, uh, uh, in fact, part of the units that we'll be talking about is a part of our flood recovery. Back in 99, mm -hmm. we had a flood. Because okay. everyone knows. Absolutely. Yeah. And so we had over 200 units that were damaged in the flood. Wow. So I've been building back since then. So as of today, we, we are something like uh, 12 short of what we had damaged. Wow. So you guys have done some impressive work since oh, then, yeah. so you're only 12 short right. from more than 200 or? Right. So we've been doing quite a bit of new construction. Absolutely. In fact, we built some units downtown, which is Lucille uh, Powell. Okay. Uh, Where at downtown exactly? This is on Marigold. Okay. And we also have a subdivision that we built off of Springfield, 48 single family homes. And so you probably played a central role and that, as in your charge of capital funding. Right, well, and development, and so, um, yeah. But, um, of course, I take all my cues from, <laughs> from the boss here. So the dynamic duo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you give, do you think, uh, I guess I should say rather, there's a misconception or perception of what, you know, housing authorities are and, you know, how they function and the people they serve. Can you kind of, you know, introduce and educate our audience on exactly you know, how you qualify to, uh, to be a recipient to stay in the homes and, you know, and what you believe the, that the purpose of the housing authority oh, Well, it's to help those individuals that are low income or very low income, mm -hmm. uh, to give them an opportunity to at least have housing until such time they can move into other housing units. Mm -hmm. In fact, we even have a home ownership program that Tony can talk about. Mm -hmm. And the homeownership program, you still have to come within a, a certain uh, income guidelines, but it's for people that um, normally didn't think that they could own a home. Absolutely. And they're just happy when they get it. So, yeah, but it's a, it's a certain guideline, and it's really hard to meet that guideline because um, they still have to have um, an income. They still have to go to the bank to be qualified. But the homes are beautiful. They're at Watley Cove, so right wow. on Springfield Road. So this really is helping, you know, people be able, right. you know, kind of a support arm yeah. to be able to have home Public housing is a stepping stone mm -hmm. until people can do better income-wise to move into the private market. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is supported by a federal program, correct? Yes. Yeah. We, we get federal funds, although we're, we're not employees of the city. Okay. We're independent. In fact, there are over 100 housing authorities in North Carolina. Uh, and, and again, I think that's a central point. So you are actually not under the city of Rocky Mountain management. Correct. So you're, man so you're reporting directly to whom? Uh, I have a board of commissioners. Okay. Uh, that are appointed by the mayor. Okay. And currently we consist of seven commissioners. Okay. And these are local? Local <laughs> individuals. Wow. And so with your work that you do, do you, are you seeing a, a lot of exciting uh, new developments that you're excited about? Uh, are you happy with the state of where the uh, Rocky Mountain Housing Authority currently well, is? Well, our agency is a little 
unusual as it relates to other agencies east of 95. In what regard? Uh, we do new construction. Okay. We take challenges. We partner with different uh, agencies, mm -hmm. uh, either businesses, to cre create affordable housing. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, Russell Jackson Village that we'll be talking about, mm -hmm. that's a partnership. Partnership between the city of Rocky Mount, uh, North Carolina Housing Finance Agency, uh, the State Employment Credit Union, and Southeastern Community Development Corporation. Okay. Yeah. So those partnerships then are really key in you being able to do the work key. that you do. In fact, uh, a lot of your federal programs now, uh, particularly grants, mm -hmm. they want to see, see partnerships. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I would I would imagine that that was for, excuse me, to be able to show that there's really a community investment right. into the work that's right. going on. that's correct. Well, that's, I mean, I think that's exciting to hear. I think that really helped a lot of people better understand mm -hmm. all the work that the Rocky Mountain Housing Authority is engaged in. And you guys are serving a lot of people, correct? Correct. And, and is it, do you feel with the economic challenges that we've had, has that been more of a burden on you? And, 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 as, and as far as I'm sure funds have been cut or restricted? Well, uh, correct. Uh, on the federal level, okay. which is our primary source of funds, it's important that we continue to receive support from the federal level mm -hmm. in terms of income. And is that through HUD? HUD. Okay. HUD Washington. Okay. Uh, although we answer to basically the area HUD office, which is in Greensboro. Mm -hmm. And as far as the state, do you, see, do you receive any funds from the state as it relates well, to? Well, the partnership that we'll be talking about, North Carolina Housing Finance Agency, mm -hmm. uh, this particular project, uh, which is Russell Jackson Village, we'll get 1.2 million from them, debt forgiveness mm -hmm. after X number of years. From the state of North Carolina? From, from the state. Oh, that's, well, that's incredible. So it sounds upbeat, like everything's <laughs> moving. You know, you're happy with where you are. Is that, is that the correct sense oh, yeah. I'm getting from you? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's good to hear because that matters for economic development, mm -hmm. that people being able to live in adequate homes and, and have affordable housing. And that's a topic and being debated one way or the other nationally mm -hmm. oh, yeah. currently. And it sounds like the work that you... It's a great need. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the need is growing, I would imagine. And, and we give preference to people who are homeless. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, well, when we come back uh, from the break, we're going to take a quick commercial break here, but we'll talk about the Russell Jackson Village, okay. which is a new project underway uh, that's extremely exciting. And um, we really want to hear you know, all the great work and, and, the, and for the people that will be able to stay there. Oh, yeah. um, so we'll, we'll be right back after this with more of the Rocky Mountain Chamber buzz. Welcome back to this edition of the Rocky Mount Chamber Buzz, brought to you again by Roger G. E. Taylor and Associates. And this is a show that highlights things that are going on in the community, being supported by the Rocky Mount Area Chamber of Commerce. I'm David Joyner, the Economic Development Chair for the Rocky Mount Area Chamber of Commerce. And I'm also the Assistant General Manager for the Doubletree by Hilton and the Gateway Convention Center. When we left, we were talking about the Russell Jackson Village that is being uh, well, construction, excuse me, is about to start. Uh, you want to tell us about this new project? Right. We have a groundbreaking that will take place June the 10th at 11 o'clock. And it's part of the Russell Jackson Village, which is named after one of our commissioners. Okay. Actually, it's two phases to this particular project. You have the phase one, which is uh, public housing units, four apartments that we will be building. Mm -hmm. And then phase two, which is a partnership with the North Carolina Housing Finance Agency, which is a supported housing program. This particular program is set up for people with disabilities. Wow. Yeah. So, and how big will this uh, new project be? Well, total in terms of units, it will be 12 units. 12 units, mm -hmm. okay. And in fact, this is the second project that we've done with North Carolina Housing Finance Agency over the five years. Uh, the first one, we have one on Paul Street, mm -hmm. uh, eight units, I mean, ten units there, and the other two, which is on Beale Street, where we'll be building the additional units. And how many uh, jobs uh, will, will be open to, to run these facilities, I'm assuming? Well, if we look at the dollar amount, mm -hmm. uh, Tony, talk a little about the dollars. Well, it's um, $1.8 I believe. Two. 
one point uh, two million mm -hmm. is it? And um, one point two million for the construction. Of for the, the construction. construction. Oh, for the construction. Okay. For the construction. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, you have a general contractor. Mm -hmm. General contractor. Um, we have something called the S three program. And they normally go around and see if they can hire anybody, especially from public housing. Mm -hmm. um, what managers do is they get a list together of anybody that have particular skills, whether it be sheetrock or whatever the skill is, brick laying or anything. And, and once we get that, it's, well, we use public housing first. We go there first. Okay. Okay to the people that live in public housing that's looking for a job. Oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. we go there. No, so that's, well, that, that's, that's really great. The requirement by yeah. the federal government is that we look in-house first, mm -hmm. job-wise, yeah. employment, uh, or even providing a business for a, uh, residents. Mm -hmm. No, and see, that really is incredible. I, when you were saying uh, in-house first, I thought mm -hmm. you meant you know, just local, it's, but it's, it's called actually, Section 3. Well, yeah, we okay. do, we do in-house first, but then we, we'll spell out. If we can't find anybody, then we'll spell out. But normally when they're skilled workers, uh, electricians and things mm -hmm. like that, they already have their people. Okay. So, but anything after that, anybody that they need to hire extra, they must go through the S3. That's, well, that's, you know, I think really reassuring to hear. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's innovative, you know, in the sense that, you know, th this really is an all-encompassing, very thought out mm -hmm. right, program to really provide a pipeline mm -hmm. to help people mm -hmm. help themselves. Mm -hmm. is that, would that be a fair characterization sure of it? Uh, and and when, when, are you, when did you say the date was that you would do the groundbreaking? June 10th. June 10th? 11 o'clock on Beale Street. Okay. And, and, are, and are these units, when, when you start to do work, like, well, what's the criteria to say, okay, we're going to build a unit like this versus build another unit? How do you arrive at the decision-making process? Well, at least in terms of the North Carolina House of Finance Agency units, uh, they take applications. Okay. From? Uh, Nonprofits, okay. housing authorities, at least once a year, and we. This is our second application uh, that was successfully funded, uh, and they look at each application, look at the amenities and the areas that uh, uh, the applicant may have or the city may have, mm -hmm. and if you're successful with their evaluation, then you get the grant. I mean, okay. the, the loan, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it was a grant. Hey, that was good to make that clear. <laughs> we always like grants, but we'll, yeah. we'll take a good loan. We yeah. can. Right. <laughs> but even better than that, it's a debt forgiveness. Well, that's, you know, that's phenomenal yeah. to hear. Right. Um, are, you, are you feeling a lot of excitement about this uh, from your community partners? Right. I think the neighborhood that we're building in is more excited than uh, oh, yeah. oh, absolutely. the neighborhood themselves, the people themselves. Yeah, because the city has been doing demolition, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we're coming back in with the new construction, as well as other agencies or businesses at some point. And then, so this is, uh, th that's an interesting point, because the city has been engaged in demolition right. of um, a lot of old and abandoned houses right. through, through the program that they've been working on. And then you all are strategically coming in right behind it, building new right. um, housing and putting people to work right. uh, within the neighborhood. I think that's really a great point to highlight, you know, for the audience to, to show how strategic these partnerships are. Because oftentimes, when we hear it uh, or read in the newspaper, you you get pieces of it mm -hmm. as the as the as the uh, project or event is underway. But this is sounds like this is a really thought out strategic right. effort and, and the uh, community partners component yeah. of it seems to be key. And, and we're, we're very appreciative that we have a city government that Absolutely. works with us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so is that, um, going forward with that, you know, are there any, uh, what, what's looking past this? You know, what, what do you see? Uh, well, it ahead? depends. I'm still trying to build back from the flood. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're only, what, 12 away? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but there are, there are other programs that mm -hmm. are out there. Staff knows, and my board know that I would pursue it. Okay, yeah. and as far as the management of these developments when you build them, who who does that fall to? At once they're built. Uh, well, we have a staff. Okay, a, a assets management staff. Okay, uh, consisting of housing managers, assistant mm -hmm. housing manager, mm -hmm. and we also have a maintenance staff. Okay. So overall, we have 30 employees. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then full time. That, yeah. I didn't know that full time employee full -time. Right. who manage all the facilities right. that you mm -hmm. have, and th and this is Nash and Ashcombe County. Correct. Yes. We're split into two counties. Okay. And uh, is how is the, is that been a challenge? Is that a 
No, it works well because we're still in the city limits. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear. <laughs> <laughs> we don't always get that response. <laughs> so I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. Uh, and, and as far as yeah, your partnerships, you know, I really want to talk a little bit about is there, is are there opportunities for uh, more partnerships that, that would make your work uh, speed it up or always. act as a catalyst in it? Always. And what are those opportunities? And, and Tony can expand on our home ownership program. Yeah. Um, I like to talk about the Section 8 portion of it. Mm -hmm. um, people who have uh, the vouchers, um, a lot of people don't know that they can become homeowners with their vouchers, even while they're still on Section 8. As mm -hmm. long as they have a job, as long as they can uh, meet the criteria of the bank so they can get a loan. And uh, like uh, Mr. Russell said earlier, it's a stepping stone. So a lot of times when you come to public housing or you're getting on Section 8, it's a stepping stone to get to the next level. So a lot of people, uh, we've got people that on Section 8 that's purchased a home. Wow. And once that home is purchased, I think they, for 15, 15 years. 15 years, the government will still subsidize. Up to that, home, right. Mm -hmm. As long as they qualify. Right. Okay. And a lot of times what will happen is after five, six years, they're making more money anyway. They don't need Section 8 anymore, so they're on their own. They're independent now. And so a lot of times these programs, if they weren't, if they didn't happen, they wouldn't be able to be homeowners as fast as they are. Absolutely. And, and I think it's interesting just to point out something, because this really has been educational for me, and I know it is for the viewers. But when you say subsidize, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that people are just staying there for free. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> but, 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 you know, I, we know on that the, that's, on, that's, on that's the, a misperception. On the public housing side, mm -hmm. uh, they pay 30% of their adjusted income okay. for rent. Uh, some families pay the utilities, and some families do not pay the total utilities. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when we look at the home ownership side of things, they pay a mortgage just like anyone else. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I think that's incredible to know that, that through that program mm -hmm. that they are encouraging individuals to own houses and helping them to, to find that pathway forward. Because I mean, at the end of the day, all of this is a matter of economic development. Oh yeah. We also do counseling too. Uh, we have three certified counselors I'm one of the counselors, and we ha actually have um, uh, programs that we do during the year. Uh, sometime two, three, four. Last year we did four. Oh, well, what, what's so, the counseling? What do you mean? So it's we teach them about home ownership, what it takes to be a homeowner. Because when you're in public housing, a lot of the people are making the the money. They're mm -hmm. making it. So they're either paying the ceiling rent, and when they're paying that much rent, they can pay a mortgage. And be buying their own And be home. buying a home. Mm -hmm. So we teach them that. They don't know. So. And, and I'm sure that that, and well, and we've seen that nationally. It isn't just one sector of the community that isn't well educated on that. It's a good majority of the country mm -hmm. that is not. So this really is you know, an enlightening uh, interview for me. And, and I think this program is a whole lot more comprehensive than I think a lot of people knew up until this point. Oh, yeah. Do you... Um, just real quick, again, when, when do you project the grand opening to be? Uh, uh, June 10th, 11 o'clock. And that's open to the public to come open out? Open to the public on Beale Street. Okay. And, uh, and that'll be a great opportunity. I actually just uh, moved to a house on the 1400 uh, end of Beale Street. Oh, really? Oh, Please don't good. send any hate mail there. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, but it's a, it's, it's a great neighborhood and uh, uh, it's a great community and it's happy. I'm very happy to hear that you know projects like this are underway, and, and really kudos to the two of you who sound like very busy people, oh, yeah. um, you know, on the work that you do. But a lot of the work that you do goes, you know, unnoticed, I think. But people don't know what what all goes into it. So this has really been educational. Uh, we're very appreciative on behalf of the Rocky Mountain Chamber of the work you do uh, as a citizen of Rocky Mountain. I thank you for the work you do. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this great program. Again, what was the date of that? June 10th. June 10th. You have an opportunity at 11 o'clock in the morning to right. be there at the grand opening of the Russell Jackson Village. Uh, this is the kind of work that we are happy to know is going on in our community. This program, again, was brought to you by the Rocky Mount Area Chamber of Commerce and our chairman, Roger D. Taylor, and his business, Roger D. Taylor & Associates. I'm David Joyner, uh, the Economic Development Chair for the Rocky Mount Chamber of Commerce, and I thank you so much for tuning in.
Where else can you get a brand new luxury car for no money down and low monthly payments? Only at Davenport Auto Park, of course. We're talking new Buicks. Top of the line, king of the hill, pick of the litter, cream of the crop. You get my drift. We're talking Buicks, like the 2015 Encore or Verano, Regal Turbo, LaCrosse, Enclave. No money down, zero, zilch, nada. Yeah, only at Davenport Auto Park. It's the real deal.